Sometimes it, it might seem that the mud and foam is so much you can hardly push it away. And that even if you try to take bath, you, know, you go down you go down, and you come up and there's a big bunch of mud and it sticks on your head. You might feel that it's difficult to separate the, the mud and the foam from the actual purifying water. So sometimes we find uh, various situations within our movement on the... Uh, macrocosmic scale or the microcosmic scale, in other words, in the macrocosmic scale there may be various deviations uh, in philosophy that permeate through our movement, uh, or in the microcosmic scale in our particular temple or the area that we are living in or working in, there are various difficulties uh, among devotees or maybe certain devotees aren't behaving properly, so there are various kinds of realities that we may find it difficult to deal with or live with and we may even find it uh, so incongruous that we, we we mix up the mud and the foam with the actual water and think that well actually this isn't Ganga at all it's just a it's just a dirty canal it's a dirty sewer pipe I'm getting out of here I'm not, I'm not going to get clean being here I'm going to get more dirty you follow that analogy that if we find that the situation is so uh, what we perceive to be non-spiritual, we may not want to have anything to do with it. That, that uh, quite often, as I say, may happen to someone who just coming to Christian consciousness, and may happen after many years. That so it, it happens quite often, even to this day, that people they, they see our movement, it looks very nice, they read the books, and they come closer, and then when they see what they see, they say, well, 
That's not what I read about in the book, so that's what I that's not what I thought it was all about. It looked good from the outside, the devotees as you know, we're serving Krishna when you get inside a little bit and see they're fighting, they're sticking money in their pocket or whatever it may be. And they can say, I said, I don't need this. I, and there's already enough I came looking for something spiritual, something better, but I see that it's just the same as what I came out of, so you know, I'm going to I'm going back. I don't need this. I, I came to get something better. Or it, it's, or it may happen after, I said, it may happen after many years. <coughs> there, there are many instances, and if, if there are many, what we could say, horror stories. You don't have to, you don't have to go to the uh, cheap paperback store to get your horror story. There are many such stories. Even sorry to say, within our movement, and of course, previously there was a, there was a general understanding in our movement that we don't talk about these things openly because we don't want to disturb people's minds. But then came the day of the internet. <laughs> and if you don't talk about it openly, someone else is going to talk about it openly. And as I was saying yesterday, I compared the surfing on the internet to like wandering through a fish market because you're going to pick up some bad smells and some pollution. It's not very nice. So, the thing about the internet is that uh, not only is everything out there openly, but not only are uh, various unsavory or fishy things out there, there are also many uh, imaginary fish out there also, or exaggerated. In other words, as I, as I was saying, there are people who tend to exaggerate or they think that everything in ISKCON is corrupt and bad. Now, you may think, well, why am I giving this seminar? Is it like, you know, maybe I've been reputed, maybe there was some, there was a secret GBC committee got together to think, you know, how are we, how are we going to convince those, you know, we have those people coming out and collecting money for us, and you know, how are we going to convince them to keep on going with all these things on the internet? Okay, Bhakti Vikaswami, go and pretend that, you know, you're going to try and, we're, we're actually sharing the problems with you and we sympathize, but actually we're just trying to dupe you into, going on with life as it is. But actually the whole thing's crap. Uh, well, you can believe that if you like, and uh, you know, maybe uh, some internet commentator will see it like that. You never know. Um, well, I'm asking you to believe me. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, <laughs> please believe me <laughs> that uh, I'm concerned, I, I say our movement, it's Prabhupada's movement, we have Prabhupada's children, grandchildren, and it's the duty of, in any, of course in modern society children don't have any duty to their parents except to uh, send them off to the old folks home as soon as they start to, uh, you know, as soon as they need any little help from their children. And the other, only other duty is to uh, get their inheritance if they have any. But in traditional societies, the children, they inherit the, the estate of their parents and they're supposed to, in honor of their parents, just like we see when uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj, we find in the first canto of Bhagavatam, he was anxious when Parikshit Maharaj was born, what kind of child, they had their astrological chart done, what kind of child is he going to be? And the astrologers said that, yes, he will uphold the dignity of your dynasty. So it's the duty of the children to uphold the dignity, of the, to maintain the estate of their parents. That the, the, this is Prabhupada's movement. Prabhupada, he said, if you can't expand what I've given, just at least maintain it. So at least on behalf of Prabhupada, the what wonderful things he has given us, that we want to maintain that. And that means not only maintaining the buildings, putting in a new tap if, if, it, if one got broken. That kind of thing should be done also. That's another sign of our love for Prabhupada. Maintaining the buildings, maintaining the institution, the legal body. But it also means maintaining the spirit that Srila Prabhupada gave. Maintaining the ideals, following the instructions. So my aim in giving this seminar it's not simply a talk, uh, 
what are they called? A pep talk. It's not a it's not a subtle psychological pep talk to make you feel good about something which is is which is intrinsically corrupt. I don't believe this movement is intrinsically corrupt. Uh, others, some people do. I I do recognize that there are uh, various problems in our home. I also recognize them as inevitable to a large extent. But that it is a, that when you have a, a big movement with very high ideals in a very bad world, then very even even if everyone was a pure devotee, there'd still be so many problems because that's the nature of this material world. But at the same time, it is our duty if we actually love Prabhupada, or if we have any feeling of uh, gratefulness to Srila Prabhupada, to maintain the ideals of his movement at the highest standard. And that means also to see the, where the ideal is not being upheld and to try to bring it up to the proper standard. So we should see with one good eye and one bad eye, but that doesn't, we should see where there are problems and see what can we do, what should we do to try to improve that. That means just like uh, in, a, in a country they talk about being a responsible citizen. A responsible city has a duty to uphold the ideals of the country. So we have a duty to uphold the ideals that Srila Prabhupada gave us. So I'm talking about reality of life, realities of life in this scholar. So that includes uh, talking about in many ways where we're not up to the ideal and how we should come to the proper ideal. Now, if we discuss these things, uh, of course, these, what I'm going to say, I, I don't think it's going to be new to anyone who walks around with their eyes open and their more their ears open. And even if you know, no one goes around like this, and uh, even if you try to avoid it, uh, you're going to hear so many things, which true or untrue, there, many of things are true. There are various less than ideal uh, things that go on in our movement, and uh, we are all likely, just like uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes people apologize to me for things that they've said or done to me which they thought might not be very nice, and of course I should also be apologizing a lot more to others, but sometimes they apologize to me and say, well, I hope I didn't disturb you, and my common reply is that, you know, after being in this movement for so many years, it's, you know, you, you get used to it. <laughs> it's not. It's you don't get disturbed so much because anyone who's anyone who's been we see that it's very very nice that younger devotees like to glorify Prabhupada's disciples who are still here. There are, there are others who say, you know, why did the others go away? And that's what, what we might be talking about. But those who are here, one of the reasons they're here is because, well. Uh, it's not that they're simply, I wouldn't say that they're insensitive. Uh, devotees are sensitive people. The process of chanting Hare Krishna should make us soft-hearted. As, well as, as well as being hard-headed realists, we should be soft-hearted. But uh, the commitment to serve Srila Prabhupada's movement, to serve Srila Prabhupada's mission, is such that you can take the knocks and go on. <laughs> so... Um, Realistically speaking, if we are going to go on in this Krishna conscious movement, we can expect that uh, personally we may be uh, roughly or improperly dealt with uh, in some point of time. Uh, and the, uh, the, there may be many, uh, some things, uh, many things in the movement which don't seem to fit the ideals that we talk about and we hear about and we expect. So what are these things and how to deal with them? Now, one little aside here. Um, I was saying that we, we can expect to be dealt with roughly or improperly at some point in time. Um, I believe that the overall situation in our movement is better than it used to be. That it's not as bad. In general, it's not as rough as it used to be. And uh, particularly a lot of praise is often given to uh, the one particular temple, 
the uh, Tobati Temple of Iskra in Bombay, in which, um, realistically speaking, they've somewhat cocooned themselves off from the wider Riscon, even within the same city. Um, and in some ways from the rest of the movement also. Um, but they've created a situation which they... It's coming from Rajanath Maharaj himself, who puts uh, very much stress on people first, uh, buildings or whatever. So uh, they have created a very uh, wonderful atmosphere there of Vaishnava behavior, a very strong uh, emphasis on what are the real ideals of our movement, which are to become Christian, to all work together to be Krishna conscious. So that's one example of uh, one center where it's actually a very developing and booming and expanding center. So many people are coming there. They keep very high standards and very high standards of Vaishnava behavior. And it's, um, of course, you never know. I'm not exactly, I'm, I'm not at all really part of that group. There may be inside there's so many, there may be various difficulties. But at least we see that generally in general devotees, they don't, they, I would imagine that they wouldn't expect to get so many knocks from inside because they, they've developed a culture in which the knocks or the nastiness, which often due to lack of training among devotees or whatever it may be, are quite common or at least not uncommon in other places. So they've created a culture in which that uh, in which devotees, they have a lot of interaction with each other in, in a structured way, in which, in a manner in such, is such that the, uh, the knocks and the tendency to knock and bruise others is very much diminished. The devotees, are, they feel that they're, they're getting spiritual substance and they're developing so that frustration, they have systems. That frustration doesn't come or doesn't, uh, so they have systems by which devotees can express their problems. And so like I said, there may be, I'm sure there may be you know, various difficulties within, but that's another part of culture, is that they try to solve it within without bringing it outside, just like in any respectable family, which uh, is practically it's not known in the West what a respectable family is. But uh, in a respectable family, it's understood that maybe they may have problems internally, but they they would sort it out among themselves, they don't put it on the internet. So, so I was saying that um, previously there was a culture in this kind of keeping everything suppressed, but nowadays uh, nothing's suppressed, everything's out. If, if, the, uh, you know, if the Tamil president says something, you know, that if he says to uh, a devotee, you should wash the pots in a tone of voice which the person the devotee thinks is abusive, then uh, you know he may have a case against him, an $8 million suit or something like this. And, or maybe on the internet the next day that this person is psychologically abusive. This is a very, you know, you can, you can call anything psychologically abusive. It's a very nebulous term. So uh, anyway, um, Nowadays, devotees who are coming to our movement, they are exposed to so many things from the first day. I was discussing with one devotee, just like in our, our recessionist temple in Bangalore. They built a big temple in the name of Riscon, and, they, and they said, we are Riscon, and to hell with the rest of Riscon. So devotees who are joining, people who are joining there, uh, practically they know one, they say that you should only read Prabhupada's books, it's a Rit Victor. But practically, the people joining there, they know one book, which is not written by Prabhupada, much better than any of Prabhupada's books. The book is called The Final Order. And they talk about that and know it, and all the, you know, all the bad things in this school, much better than they know Bhagavad Gita. And if they meet anyone, they'll immediately start preaching to him all these things. Instead of preaching that you should surrender to Krishna, and say, actually, you know, this... This GPC is corrupt that way, and that, and then he's corrupt, and that's corrupt, and he's corrupt. And so, uh, so uh, people coming to Krishna consciousness, they from the beginning they get to hear so many things, and they get to see so many things. But still, people are coming. 
which suggests to me that either people joining our movement are very stupid, or they're very intelligent. <laughs> because they can see that despite all these things which are there, maybe not to the extent that some people say they are there, or maybe, yes, they are to some extent, but they see there's still some substance there. So, I was, that, 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 su that suggests that there is still something, there's still something good going on. It's not that Iskon is on the verge of Quran, it's still, somehow or other, as I often said, I've said for many years, that all of us, all of us as corrupt, bad, rascal, wicked, nonsense, leaders and others in Isco, despite all our incompetencies, all of us put together are not powerful enough to stop Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement and the desire of Srila Prabhupada for preaching Krishna consciousness all over the world. So, despite us, it will go on. It will go on. The faces may change, but the, the drama goes on. This is Leela. Leela means drama. So the, the, the difference between Krishna Leela and the drama of the material world is this is reality. And anyone who takes part in that, that's another point we should remember, that we, we may say, you know, this person's bad, that person's bad, he's a rascal, she's a rascal, because, you know, we don't, nowadays, you don't want to just say everything he or everything you say he or she. So instead of just saying he's a rascal, you're saying she's a rascal. <laughs> it should work both ways, that's So, uh, so, so, um, Whatever the uh, incompetencies or badnesses may be, uh, Prabhupada used to see that well, people are serving Krishna. So then there may be and there are various incompetencies or corruptnesses or whatever, but Prabhupada was doing some service for Krishna. A few years ago, I was at an initiation ceremony in England. And uh, the devotee who was acting as the MC, so to speak, he said that this is the first major initiation ceremony we've had since the days of Havoa. Now, you may not even know, but that will, for anyone who's lived in England, that will ring a very big bell. For many of you, it won't ring any bell, but for those of you who have lived in England, if you say the name Havoa, so anyway, um, it was the first initiation in a long period. A, a, a very the Bhagavan Prabhu was a very uh, powerful leader and a very uh, autocratic and uh, to use an English saying, he trod on a lot of people's toes. So after he left, you know, there was a lot of doubts on the leadership and who they are moving from Bhagavan. No one wanted, people were very reluctant to take initiation from anyone because of some bad experiences that were there. So anyway, I was at this initiation ceremony a few years ago, which was the first major initiation ceremony, there maybe about 50 devotees getting initiated. And this Kripa Maiprabhu was the MC pointed out. This is the first major initiation ceremony in maybe about 8 or 10 years in England. So he made the point that everyone in this room was getting initiated today. They know all about the history of Isco. They've seen so many things. They know so many things about our movement. But still, they are coming and accepting his initiation in Isco today. So I think that's the situation very much for all devotees coming now to our movement. That uh, mostly devotees, they're a little cautious. There are various reasons for that. They are cautious about accepting initiation. They are cautious about who they accept initiation from, because that's one of the real, one of the prominent realities of life in Iskon. That many of the gurus in Iskon fell away. They were worshipped as good as God, but it was later found that they were not able to maintain that position. And it caused devastation 
in the lives of most of their disciples, of those who fell away. Most of the disciples of those who fell away, they're, they're uh, no longer, well, their faith in Christian consciousness, which was reposed in their, primarily in their guru, was shattered. Um, so nowadays, devotees are very cautious about who they accept as guru. And even what is the role of a guru in Iskon? Now we just had discussion afterwards, and you know this this kind of discussion. Uh, how long should we have the discussion for? It's been going on for about uh, 20 years, so I don't think we're going to resolve that one right after. Right, if we open a discussion session, I don't think we're going to resolve that exactly. And but I don't think it's ever going to be resolved in one way because gurus are people, and they are different. They every guru is carries out his service in a different manner. Somewhat different manner. I mean, basically the job's the same. The service is the same of representing the previous acharyas. But uh, different devotees do so in different ways and present them. Some present themselves in a very uh, prominent manner. Others rep present themselves in a very humble manner. It doesn't necessarily mean that one who presents himself in a prominent manner is necessarily less humble than those who present themselves in a humble manner. It may be sometimes we see the persons who appear very humble, but this transessor Tagore used to lambast the Sahajyas, as he called them, the living incarnations of hellish imitative humility. <laughs> so... Anyway, different devotees uh, <coughs> present themselves differently. So, uh, but there is definitely uh, a lot of uh, caution, and that's good. In one sense, that's good. Because one is supposed to, before accepting initiation, one is supposed to see, one is supposed to test the guru. Is this person competent to am I, is this person competent to guide me? So uh, our devotees are seeing now more carefully. So that's one uh, one <coughs> level of difficulty. <coughs> who can you accept as someone who is competent to guide? Now, uh, as far as I can see, the, the, the answer to that question is quite simple in many ways. That uh, Srila Prabhupada, we say, founder of Acharya Visko. So who is representing him? Prabhupada said, do as I am doing. So who teaches us to uh, follow what Prabhupada said? and how to enact that in our lives is competent to guide us. Guru, guru means he's the proper follower of his guru. So different, uh, different persons, different disciples, they have different personalities. It's not a stereotype law. But basically the, the, the right or the, the qualification to be a guru in this moment is that one is strict and follows Srila Prabhupada. Now, uh, we, should be, we should be very careful to understand this point. Because if, if we don't understand philosophically, then we're going to understand sentimentally. Now, it's often thought that you know, if a guru says something, it must be right. Right? But actually it's around the other way. The guru is a guru because what he says is right. It's not that just because he has the position guru that everything he says is right, but because what he says is according to Guru and Sadhu and Shastra, therefore he's a guru. And we should think that what he says is right, but we also have to see if he says something which is not according to Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, which uh, particularly when we say guru, we 
as followers of Srila Prabhupada, we have to accept that Guru should represent Prabhupada in what he says. And again, I stress what Prabhupada says in, in three categories. Practice, precept, and ideal or move. You know what Prabhupada practice what he told us to do. Precept. How sorry, practice and practice and precept come together. Prabhupada himself, how he acted, how he showed us how to act. Practice and precept, philosophy. Guru should present the same philosophy in its details. And the same mood or ideal. Now, I, my thesis here, and it's open to discussion, but I think can be well accepted, and most of us will accept, is that I was saying that naturally a big movement with very high ideals in a bad world is going to, there are definitely going to be problems. And even if everyone in our movement was a pure devotee, we'd still have problems because of the very nature of this material world. But apart from that, there, there are various problems caused by our inadequacies. That means our foolishness, lack of intelligence, and so on. But many of the problems that our world is suffering from, that we need not suffer from, and suffer from means that we as individuals and others who are coming to this world, our whole world becomes weak, we, we lose the momentum, we lose the focus, if we don't strictly follow what Srila Prabhupada gave us. We should understand that whatever strength we have in this moment, whatever potency we have, it's only coming in as much as we follow what Srila Prabhupada gave And if we don't follow that, then uh, it's, it, it, it will become something like Christianity in which they say, we believe in Jesus. And Prabhupada used to criticize the Christians, that they say, we believe in Jesus, but then Prabhupada said, that, well, why don't you follow what he says? That was Prabhupada's criticism of Christianity, that they simply say that we believe in, uh, in Christ. So and there's a whole, uh, it's called antinomian. There's an antinomian, it's a, it's a word, it's come up in theology. In the, the word theology in English means Christian theology generally. But it means the belief or the, the idea that you get saved just by believing in God and by His mercy He just saves you. So we should be careful of that, that we just, you know, we, we say Jai Prabhupada, put a big flag with Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada in the picture. And we stand underneath it and say Jai Prabhupada and do everything with Prabhupada, you know, everything different to what Prabhupada said. And then we become as hypocritical as the Christians. Prabhupada, that was his complaint. Why don't you do what he says? So even this, Suresh Prabhu was saying he's cooperating with Bhakti Chari Maharaj about establishing Prabhupada, establishing the minds of devotees, what it means that Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya Avisko. But um, I don't know exactly what's in your seminar, but I would say that apart from a, a philosophical understanding, it's not merely a, a philosophical understanding, okay, no, okay, Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. But really, if Prabhupada is our founder Acharya, we will actually manifest that if we follow what he says. And if we don't, then you know we can we can give initiation tests. What does it mean that Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya Viscon and they can write whatever they have to write, that means this, this, this. But if we don't follow what he says, then uh, it's then we become Christianity, churchianity. It's not Christianity, it's it's just a, a church in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, but not in the instruction of Jesus. So then again, we become, if we don't follow, then uh, what Hindus, the Vishwa Hindu Parishas used to praise ISKCON, that ISKCON is doing a very good job spreading Hinduism all over the world, and we used to protest. But actually, if we don't follow what Prabhupada says, then it's true. 
we're spreading Hinduism all over the world because Hinduism means what is Hinduism? Originally there's the Vedic instruction to surrender to Krishna and Hinduism means that you go through all the rituals and the ceremonies and the formalities and you do everything very piously but you don't surrender to Krishna. That's called cheating religion. And Prabhupada didn't come to start another cheating religion. Prabhupada came to this world to teach what is actual religion. He didn't come to, to start and what's, what's, there's no glory to Prabhupada if we say he came to the West and started the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. If it is just another religion. We go to an interfaith conference and you know, here's the Mormons and here's the Baptists and here's the Jews and here's the, you know, the Mohammedans and here's the Buddhists and here's the you know, Sai Baba and here's Islam. And we're happy to be with you all today and we believe in everything you say and you can believe in everything you say and you are the same as us and we are the same as you and we all believe in the same idea and shake hands together and have a vegetarian lunch. And they're very pious. And that's good. So our aim... Actually someone wrote to me recently, he was a little upset at something I'd written, which got published widely recently. It was just a letter that got published. So he was uh, upset at something I'd written, and then uh, something I'd written about academic preaching which uh, I'd written something, Dhanavir Maharaj published it. So it said that in, instead of, Prabhupada said we should talk about kicking the scholars in the face with boots, but we are bowing down and licking their boots with our faces. <laughs> so I didn't invent it actually, it's good. But I, I probably didn't. So then he was protesting and I said, well I'm not again academic preaching per se, but if the boot fits, wear it. If, if you're compromising with them, then you're not preaching to them. If, you, if you're becoming one of them, if you write books in which you interview scholars, and the scholar says that, well, uh, you know, Swami Bhaktivedanta did a good job of translating Bhagavatam, but actually it wasn't so good, and he didn't translate it properly, and this, that, and the other, and the so-called disciple Prabhupada says yes, and publishes it in a book, with no reply to the rascal scholar, then you become a rascal scholar yourself and you distribute these books in history. And when I spoke to the mundane scholar who was supposed to be a disciple of Prabhupada about this, he said, but now the scholars appreciate us because of that book. They appreciate you, you rascal, because you became one of them. Thank you very much. We do, you're no longer kicking us in the face with your books, now you're licking our books. Thank you very much. Now Iskon has become broad-minded. So anyway, uh, this, this devotee wrote to me that, he was writing that, well, you know, we have to have cultural integration. But I, I wrote about, I never saw anything Prabhupada said about cultural integration. I saw about cultural revolution. Cultural integration means you want to get integrated back into that society of meat eaters and hypocrites and everything we left the world for and now we want to become part of that. We, now we want, our main aim in life is to become recognized as a bona fide religion. We should get a certificate from the meat eaters in the universities that we are a bona fide religion. And Swami, a so, scholar so and so, professor so and so is an expert on religion. He studied all the religions of the world and when he's not drunk he can uh, speak very cogently <laughs> on all these subjects. And he has satisfied that this one is a bona fide religion. <laughs> when he's not drunk, means that uh, one devotee was telling me he was going to see. He was years ago on the BBT Library Party, he was traveling in America, and he went to one of the most famous scholars of Indology, of in Indian religions or whatever, Southeast Asian, South Asian studies. Famous man in his department. He was a big fish in a small pond. So, uh, so he walked into his office at midday to present to him Prabhupada's books. He found him stretched out on his desk, fully drunk. 
these are the so Prabhupada wanted that the scholars would give us record yes, Iskon is a bona fide movement, but not by that Faustian method of selling your soul. You know this there's a the story of uh, Dr. Faust by Faust that uh, he sold his soul to the devil to get what benefits from the devil. So now uh, certain leaders in our movement are talking of cultural integration. I, you know, please don't try to culturally integrate me. I want to go back to Godhead. I want to go to Krishna. I want to get integrated into that culture. We should, uh, we should understand very clearly that we are living in a demoniac. So basically, the society we live in is demoniac. Now, when we meet, it doesn't mean, of course, Prabhupada spoke a lot about demoniac society. And we used to have a very strong rule, you know, everyone's a demon. Well, in one sense it's true. But on the other hand, Prabhupada also said that it's, most of the people are good, but it's the leaders who are bad. The leaders are misleading. So, um, we shouldn't develop an inimical attitude towards people in general. But at the same time, we should understand that they are misled and they are acting in a manner which is demonic. And there is a difference between the devotee and the non-devotee. And it's not all the same. Now, how our movement has... What I'm talking about here is compromising the ideals of Srila Prabhupada, which, has, which gradually leads to comprom compromising his uh, instructions about how we should behave, and then it comes to compromising the philosophy also, which is what happened with Christianity, is that Jesus had an ideal. As Prabhupada said, Jesus was not, an, his message wasn't eat, drink, sleep, be merry and enjoy. His message was back to Godhead. He stood against the world. He stood against the uh, established social order. And he was prepared to do anything to establish his mission. And he was crucified. He was a revolutionary. But, uh, and the first few hundred years of, of Christianity, they were like that. They were little people, they were, they were martyred, and they were, uh, they were vegetarians, and they believed in reincarnation and all this. But gradually, it became the mainstream. It was incorporated into the demoniac society. Vegetarianism was thrown out of Christianity. And the Protestant ethic that uh, God helps those who... Uh, what is that? That uh, God helps those who help themselves. So the, the originally Christians, they, they, as Jesus said, thou should love God and not mammon. Mammon means to your life. But the Protestant ethic was that, well, God, the, the sign that God loves you is that you are materially prosperous. So the whole ideal of Christianity was the, the idea that we should sacrifice ourselves for the sake of God, that was thrown out. And uh, Christianity became uh, a more pious version of demoniac life. <laughs> Demons can sometimes be pious also. Jura Sandra was very pious. We learned from the Vedas. He was very pious. He was a demon. Because he didn't accept the principle of surrendering to Krishna. He worshipped Vishnu. But he hated Krishna. Strange, huh? So you may officially worship God, but go against his principles. Now, um, how has this come about yesterday? Yesterday I was talking about how... In, in the early days, our devotees were in a very surrendered mood, and then later they found that, uh, well, many of us need to get married, and then, uh, and then the uh, next thing is, well, you know, there's babies to feed, and you can talk about Bhagavad Gita all you like, but it doesn't feed them. Actually, it does if you have full faith. Krishna says that in Bhagavad Gita. 
According to Krishna, if one has full faith in him, then he will provide what you need. And the, the example in Maharashtra, famous example, is uh, Tukaram, whose wife hated him because all he did was chant Hare Krishna. And she wanted him to do something practical and bring some money. So, uh, anyway, if someone is fully convinced of that and fully surrendered to that ideal, and there are examples in our movement of Krihastas who, uh, they never did a day's work in their life. <laughs> but Krishna maintains them. Never did a day's work in their life means they didn't go to the factory or they didn't sell uh, you know, toothpaste door to door or whatever. But they, they kept on serving the mission and Krishna has maintained them. But uh, it may not be that everyone is on that level of conviction and so uh, bills have to be paid. What to do? Actually, Prabhupada had a solution. The Prabhupada saw everything. Prabhupada saw that, and Prabhupada said that uh, he spoke about farm projects. He said millions were done on farms. Prabhupada understood that most of all these are going to be greenhouses and they need some means of income. And if they have to go back to the demoniac society, then they're going to become influenced and they're going to lose their Krishna consciousness to a large extent, or they're going to have to compromise it. So Prabhupada, he uh, wanted to start farm projects in which devotees could live in their own communities on their own, with their own standards and their own ideals. Because if we had to go back to the demoniac society for financial succor, then we have to uh, we have to live on their terms. We have to accept their culture. Krishna consciousness is it's not simply a religion. Most people have a religion. They have their job, their wife, their home, their TV, their cat, their dog, and their religion. <laughs> the Krishna consciousness is not simply a religion. It is life. But if we are forced to live in a society in which religion is one hour a week and maybe five minutes in the morning every day also, then we're not going to have the strength to become Krishna conscious. And if we're forced to associate with people whose ideal is eat, sleep, drink, be merry and enjoy, then uh, we're not going to be able to maintain our Krishna consciousness properly. So Prabhupada saw this and he wanted to establish uh, Farm agrarian based communities, because people, people say, well, I'm not a farmer. And actually, in, in agrarian based societies, actually very few people are farmers. You may be surprised to hear it. But uh, the Vaishyas, they, they do not constitute the majority of the population. And not even all Vaishyas are farmers, although most people also do in agrarian based societies. Uh, which was normal up until my father's generation, uh, when he was a kid, and even when I was a kid. Most people, apart from being a teacher or a doctor or whatever, they also have a garden and they also grow some of their food. And people would, in India it's very common that people would keep cows. And, in other words, they produce some of their food, but the, the, the production of grains, uh, that was a special <coughs> the work of Vaishyas, who, who food producing is not the only thing that goes on the farm. There are also doctors, teachers, artisans, and so many other things. So uh, Prabhupada is reported to have said that 50% of my work is not done in establishing of our national, in which he wanted to do that by sitting on the farm at Gita Nagari. He said, I'll sit and show you how to live simply. Because People in the West and in India nowadays also don't know how to live simply. People can't imagine living without electricity or water that comes out of taps. So uh, if we consider what Prabhupada did, and then if we consider that Prabhupada said, from, uh, it's from a reliable source, and I, I considering 
what Prabhupada's, uh, how much stress Prabhupada put on this, and considering the social difficulties that we are having through, I would say largely through not having instituted this, uh, I, I would take that as a reliable statement. So, one re there are many, there are many compromises within our movement. We're not following exactly as Prabhupada said in many ways. What are the reasons for that? Um, one reason, uh, a major reason I would say is because we haven't set up the uh, communities in which devotees can live according to their, or uh, according to the ideals of Krishna consciousness. There are other reasons also, faith, faith of devotees, which is very much, faith is essential. Without faith we can't act in Krishna consciousness. And faith is, it's not simply some amorphous, nebulous faith. It's not just like faith, love. I mean, sometimes you see uh, in Baroda uh, <coughs> driving up from the station, not going by Bullock Car, driving up to the uh, temple, you see there's a list of, as you, uh, on the railings, faith, love, trust, kindness. So they're trying, maybe they're trying to think how we can benefit people by exhorting them to become, and have faith and love and kindness. But faith, all these qualities, they're reposed in people. So faith, to a large extent, has been broken, by, uh, especially by fall-downs of gurus. And backtracking, but it's all interconnected. Um, but one, well, in one sense that's good because uh, there's, there's, there's this silver lining, every cloud has a silver lining, so there's, there's something good has come from that, is that, that uh, now devotees, uh, like I said, they're careful to choose who they accept as a guru, they want to see there's some actual substance there, it's not simply hope. You can say, Jaya Vishnu Parash, you know, you can say, and uh, you can hype up anyone. You know, even Jimmy Carter became the president of the United States. But uh, apparently, Ronald Reagan's whole his whole his whole thing was hype. He was, he was, a, he was a movie star. He knew how to use it. So uh, be ready. So, uh, but devotees are looking to see what's the substance. In a, in, so that's that's good in one sense that devotees are going to see that yeah, I'm going to set someone and they have to see if they, you know, have they have they got have they got what it takes what's this America, they, can they walk the walk and not just talk the talk so that's one thing but another thing is the uh, practically compromise it would seem to be inevitable if if we're not in a situation where we're understanding most people are not so strong that they can go out into the world and live in, Prabhupada said, this, this modern leaders will force you to work like hogs and dogs and asses. And you find in modern society people have to work so hard. They say we're making progress, we're going to have to work so hard just to get enough money to live. And then you have to go to some of these demoniac universities to get a degree so you can get a so-called good job. Good job means that while working like an ass, you earn slightly more money, so you can live in a you can live in a more comfortable. When you go home, you can you can go to a more comfortable pigsty, maybe an air conditioned ass hole, <laughs> you know, pigeon hole or whatever. Sorry, I didn't think you didn't put on. It's just slipped out. Truth hurts. Okay, strike it from the record. One good take back. <laughs> so, uh, so if you're, if you're working so hard, the modern society, Prabhupada, he said that, he said in this lecture actually, which he delivered at Uppsala University in Sweden, he said, I don't know if the leaders, if they'll tolerate me saying this. And Prabhupada said, they're making you work so hard that they, simply by working so hard, they will kill your spiritual aspirations. 
because you work so hard, and then by the time you come home, you're so physically and mentally exhausted that you don't have any energy for any, you don't have any physical or mental energy for any, for any higher ideal. All you can do is flop in front of the TV and get filled up with more garbage to pollute your mind. Which is one reason I'm, t I'm telling devotees all the time. Whenever I tell them, usually I, I tell devotees and they all laugh because they think it's such an outrageous thing to say. But I tell them, throw out your TV. You didn't laugh. Jai is the first, first group that I said that they never they didn't laugh. So that's what I do. Usually when I say people laugh, they think it's absurd or outrageous. And even uh, I happen to know that there are many devotees, and there may even be leaders of our movement, maybe, I, I, I didn't take a census, but I know for sure there are many even temple residents. <coughs> So, what can you expect? The TV, it's... Uh, hmm, what's that voice? Try three gates to help. Trivitanarakasti, dam dwaram, nashanam, atmanam, kamas, krotas, tatara, tasma, eta, chayam, tiajit. Very clear and strong language Krishna uses. There are three gates leading to hell. Nashan and Atmana, they destroy the soul. Soul destroying. Lust, greed and anger. Therefore these three should be given up. Prabhupada translated. Therefore an intelligent person should give them up. And what is modern TV? Calm, lust, sex, sex, sex. Crow, anger, violence and load. Advertisements, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. Simply increasing lust, greed, and anger. But it's a common thing, it's practically acceptable. <coughs> the bodies are watching TV. That's only one behavioral anomaly. It's a severe compromise. I, I, even why would anyone want to? Why would anyone want to watch TV? What's that? It's so horrible. <coughs> so nasty. And it's not Krishna conscious. Amuku Yasya Sankalta, Pratiku Yasya Varjana. We should accept everything that is favorable for advancing Krishna conscious and reject everything unfavorable. It's clearly unfavorable. As you said, watching the news. Even the news. It is presented in such a way to make you think that the demoniac society is very nice. And any intelligent person can understand that uh, the news is it's basically propaganda. Now, America is going to bomb Iraq with ten times more bombs. I recently saw the newspaper, the headline. Bush said it will be ten times more than last time, bombs on Iraq. So, it, you know, justice, truth, democracy, peace, love, and, and oil. Just, you know, it's just a side issue that we want to control the oil. So, you know, anyone can understand that America doesn't give a damn about peace, love, justice, this, that, they want the damn oil. So, but if you see, if you watch the TV, but actually I had an experience, and this happened to me, that I was in uh, Bangladesh some years ago, and we had to play it, because it's, now things have changed, but it's like, Undercover, suppose semi undercover, quite undercover kind of operation. Because it's a Muslim ruled country. So we had to, our landlord was a liberal kind of fellow, Muslim guy. So we had to, you know, placate him and play along with him a bit. So he used to give me time and newsweek every week, and I was supposed to read it and then discuss with him. And I found after some time, a few weeks of reading this, I started to I found myself thinking, you know, America's wonderful. What's going on? America's not wonderful. I, it's, it's not written in Time magazine. It's not written directly, but it's in every drop of ink and between the drops also. <laughs> Just like in Prabhupada's books. In Prabhupada's books, in every drop, and even in the letter O, in the space in the center. Even if you get, an, even if you get, you know, a microscope, you can't see it directly, 
But every atom of that book, Prabhupada is shouting, surrender to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. <laughs> Even when he's describing that the, the dynasty of Puru and this one was the son of that one and this one was the son of that one. When he's describing the, uh, the constitution of the universe, every atom in that book, Prabhupada is shouting and beating you on the head, surrender you as so in the same way in Thailand, it may not be explicitly stated, but it's basically saying that America is wonderful and everyone should just be an American. Uh, if, you're, if you're unfortunate enough to be an Indian or a Bangladeshi, then you can just accept the American way of life and cooperate with us. So this is Asad Sangha. Our movement has become influenced by Asad Sangha by going out into the workforce, the Kami workforce, by watch and then watching TV in so many ways. So what can we do? Well individually we don't have to become part of that famous quotation this is the third time I'm quoting now, Suresh Prabhu. Am I part of the problem or part of the solution? We should know what Prabhupada's ideals are, what his instructions are, what the philosophy is. For that we have to read Prabhupada's books. You won't get it in Time Magazine. You won't get it on the news. You won't get it on Discovery Channel. That's another thing. I'm watching Discovery Channel because it's knowledge. So I can use it for preaching. Bhagavad time is much better for preaching than Discovery Channel. So, uh, Of course, it's not that we can't read the newspaper or the evil. Could be that we watch the news. I don't personally. I don't read the news. I just saw the headline. And then, uh, sometimes I read the news, but not generally. Generally, you just waste your time you just reading about this politician said this and that politician said that. It can be also for preaching. You can, among Kami people, you can use, you see, this came up in the news and then you. You catch their attention with that because that's what they're interested in. They're not interested in. They may not be direct. If you start directly talking about the esoteric philosophy, by esoteric I mean talking about we're not the body. And to them, that's esoteric. To us, not their Christian leaders, esoteric. But to them, you're not the body is esoteric. So uh, if you start talking about that, they, they may not be interested. So you might talk about the Prabhupada did that. If you see the early Bhagavadas, you see the. He, he would quote something from the news and then he'd give the Christian conscious perspective on it. So it's not that that, that you know, not that entirely banned from the news. But uh, our Shastra is not, is the Bhagavad Quran, not the Kali Yuga Quran, then the newspaper. We should take news from the spiritual world. That gives us spiritual strength. Now, how are we doing for time? I still didn't get down to the specifics. I'm still on theory, basically. Ten to six. Ten to six. So we started a little late. Um, not following in practice. Just jerking the discussion into another channel. Um, one of my sannyas sannyasi godbrothers, whenever I meet him, he's still very upset over a GBC resolution that was passed last year or the year before. It still hasn't come to, still hasn't accepted it. And it there could be such a resolution. I don't even know what it is exactly, but there's a resolution something that GBCs don't have to come to Mongolati. Something like this. So he's very upset with it. Then why should there be, it should be the other way around. They do have to come. So there are many such things. It's become accepted in our just like, I remember years ago, it must have been, what, 88, I went to New Zealand. And uh, I was in the temple in Auckland for two or three days, and then I just, I asked them, you know, why aren't the temple leaders coming to Mongolia? And they said, well, then we have to come five days a week. There's a resolution. We only have to come five days a week. <laughs> That's 
Prabhupada said, said Sri Maharaj quoted him on this. Actually, the quote is in a slight, he reformatted in a different way. Said Sri Maharaj reformatted the quote. Prabhupada said something that uh, leaders should lead by hearing and chanting. But Sat Sri Maharaj reformulated a bit to say that leader means a leader in hearing and chanting. He leads not by position, name, title, but by showing how to do and doing what Prabhupada told us to do. And if leaders don't do that, then followers also are not. They'll feel they don't have to. I had an experience once that, uh, not only once, and it was on the case of the uh, town president one time saying, Come on, you got to go to Mongolia. He said, My guru doesn't go. <laughs> So, uh, yes, what does it mean? Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya Visko. That means we have to follow what Prabhupada told us to do. Now, we may say, well, Prabhupada himself didn't go to Mongolia. That's true. He himself didn't go. But uh, he did tell his followers to. And he, he said once, I'm not going because I'm translating my books. That is an important thing to do. So it may be that sometimes someone doesn't go to Mongolia. And there may be what could be considered a valid reason for that. And if someone is very sick, or if they, uh, you know, maybe they they just arrived after a 12-hour flight at 1 o'clock in the morning, and there may be valid reasons, or they may have been at a, a preaching program with 30,000 people up until 12 o'clock at night for the last three nights. So there may be a valid reason. But when it becomes more when, when, when you you create a situation in which you don't have to come to Mongolia, then when, when it becomes perceived that a leader is not serious about following a basic principles of Prabhupada gave us, then followers tend to think, well, then it's okay not to do that. That's why, actually, there should be no reason to stress that Prabhupada is the founder of Acharya Viskar. We only have to... The only reason that we have to stress that, from what I can understand, is because we have to stress that because leaders are not leading in a manner that Prabhupada told us to do. Then we have to say, don't look at what the leaders are doing, look at what Prabhupada was doing and told us to do. If, if leaders were actually doing that, then we wouldn't have to stress. It would, just, it would be what's called a transparent via media. The leader simply says, do this because Prabhupada said to do it. He also does it. And everyone understands that we're doing it because Prabhupada said to do it, and that's why we're doing it. But then, uh, if you see that Prabhupada said to do this, and the leader does something else, and then you, don't, you know, which way is it? Then we have to stress Prabhupada's the power of trying to do what he said. So, you can bring this back to Bhakti Charu Maharaj also. That was the theme in the summer. Uh -huh. Everything you said was just. Mm -hmm. So, what should we do? Like, uh, also, one of was telling me that someone had come up to him and said, I've read your books. I like them very much. Should I do what is stated in those books? Or should I do what I see you are doing? He <laughs> noticed there was a difference. That is not as it should be. That means that we are not following, we are not manifesting what Prabhupada wanted us to do. And then, what does it mean to distribute these books? What does it mean to talk about the whole world becoming Krishna? We want to make the whole world Krishna, and we don't even talk about that much. But does that mean that everyone will uh, if they'll, uh, come on Sunday to the temple in their shorts and watch TV the rest of the week? <laughs> And the whole world became Krishna conscious. <laughs> Krishna consciousness means absorption in Krishna. It's a very intense process. 
devotees have to take it very... If we don't take it very seriously, then it becomes a mundane religion. And uh, I'm afraid, I'm very afraid that our movement is not only in danger of becoming a mundane religion, or is becoming a mundane religion, but in, in many ways already is. Because if we, uh, if we compromise on the standards that Prophet said, if we, uh, if we think it's okay to, uh, just like I was told in one country, in Croatia, I was told that uh, most of the devotees he told. So what? Uh, it's only a small thing, but Prabhupada didn't want to always do each other. And you may say, well, actually, we found out that it's, uh, it's bona fide. It's bona fide. But anyway, Prabhupada wants to each other. So it may be bona fide, but you may consider it bona fide, but Prabhupada didn't. So, so they decided that let's be realistic, let's be practical. If we're going to make the whole world Christian conscious without chocolate, then what's the use? <laughs> It'll be easier to make people Christian conscious if we, if we tell them, you know, you can eat chocolate, you can watch TV. There are four regulated principles, but you know, you don't really have to follow them if you don't want to. Optional. But at least you should be a vegetarian. Uh, then. Uh, Maybe we'll spread Christian consciousness very widely. I doubt it, actually. I, I doubt if we'll spread even any form of Christian consciousness very widely. Because uh, people, why should they? Why should they take this up? They can, they can get all that in any uh, hocus pocus. Look at your nose and become God movement. Why should they come to this? That's already there. Christian consciousness is supposed to be the the real alternative. So if we're not an alternative, if we become just a vegetarian movement with, uh, you know, put a picture of Krishna on the wall, an abstract art painting, so we can't actually recognize it's Krishna. What's that? Oh, it's Krishna. Really? You see there's a flute? <laughs> I'm not joking. I mean, I'm, I'm not... I've actually seen it. I won't say where I saw it. It's too, I haven't got the pain of seeing where I saw that picture. An abstract art painting of Krishna. So we can have that on the wall. And uh, But that won't be Krishna conscious. Krishna conscious means you have to follow very seriously. So I part of the problem, part of the solution. Well, we're part of the problem because we're living in this milieu. We're part of the solution if we don't take part in it. <laughs> Rebel. Rebel against the system. <laughs> Follow Prabhupada's system. Rebel means get up early in the morning, go to Mongolati, chant 16 rounds, the Maha Mantra. Believe that we can go back to God in this life if we follow the process that Prabhupada gave us. Have faith in Krishna. Uh, don't watch TV. Be serious about Krishna consciousness. If you do these things, you'll be called a hardliner or a fundamentalist. If you can get called that, you can understand you're doing something great. <laughs> but it's very. Uh, you see, uh, just see now, people, fundamentalists. This, this is a very. This term is a. It's a very considered a very bad term in one sense, fundamentalist. Fundamentalist means whether they're a fundamentalist Christian, or often, you see, often they're equated with violence, but actually fundamentalist means someone who believes in the fundamental principles of their religion. So that's what we're supposed to, and modern consumer society doesn't want fundamentalists. They don't mind religion, it's just that they don't want people to take it very seriously. They like religion. Religion makes you good. So be religious, that's okay. But don't be a fundamentalist, because if you become a fundamentalist, 
then you won't want to buy lipstick and plastic ducks and TV sets and you won't want to buy all these things and you won't want to work hard to produce all these things to get enough money to buy all these things that you don't need and then our whole consumer society will collapse. So religion is good. Go to church and pray to God to give you more money so you can buy more lipstick. So you can seduce the uh, guy in the next row in the church. <laughs> Sorry, no, I have to put that down the other way or I'll be accused of being misogyny. So you could also buy aftershave to seduce the woman in the next row. <laughs> so uh, people are afraid of fundamentalists, but we should be fundamentalists in the sense. We should believe in the fundamental principles of Bishop Majors and follow them. So is there any discussion? <laughs> Madhav Maharaj. I, in 1992, I remember seeing a Times of India article where a Mulan in Bombay gave a fatwa to his, to his followers to throw the TV off the balcony. Very good. Uh, and actually some of them did it. Now, if you live in Bombay on the ground floor, it was quite a spectacle. <laughs> some of them actually did it. And it was, uh, I tell people the same thing, but then I tell them you can sell it to some idiot who wants an sell idiot box. Sell it to some idiot. That's exactly what they Sell it to an idiot who wants an idiot box and then buy a set of bio tubs. Another thing, I saw him buy the tip of And actually, some, some people have done that. Some devotees who are, who are preachers they actually do that. And then they report our home is so peaceful. So much better without it. Another thing, I was looking at ba uh, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj's leadership book, Volume 2, where he gives ideas for time management. And he's actually quoting uh, one of these, his name is Alan Lakin, some uh, time management guru. You know? He's got some 63 points of time management. And one of them is, I don't. I don't own a TV and don't look at a newspaper. It was, like that. it was interesting. Even the carvies for multi, you know, want to become efficient, even for the purpose of sense gratification, the most intelligent ones don't even bother. Another thing is fundamentalism. Funda funda funding means what's, what's, everything requires capital. Everything requires input. So fundamentalism Suresh, what was the definition? Suresh, what is it? Our editor here. Fundamental funding is that which. I don't think it's got anything to do with funds, is it? Well, no, but what is it? It's, uh, Maybe originally. Uh, fun. It's fun. That's what's going on. Fundamental. Social come. No, no, no. But fun actually basically means the, the basic founding points that 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 that, that which it thrives on. Fundamentals means the the basics. Foundation, uh, foundational points. Another thing, comment I came to mind is that Madhuri Kadambani, one of the five subtle anarthas, is what is called a patipati. And a patipati is what is like a managerial excuse to not be spiritual. That's basically what a patipati is. I have no time, I'll do it later. No, you actually. And in the way of doing some service, you're not attending spiritual programs. You have a valid excuse, mm -hmm. and it becomes chronic. Mm -hmm. This is called a pati pati. <laughs> it's, it's an anartha. It's, it's, it's a very subtle anartha. It can become chronic. Well, I don't think devotees in Russia watch TV much. It's, it's pretty boring, the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I see some of them do. Some of them do. Yeah, I've seen some of them do. I walked in on one, on one <laughs> some devotees here and there, and they were watching it. It starts with the news. And yeah, the one, one, the, one, good, one good fortune for Russia is that people don't speak English. <laughs> so they can't, well, they can't have all these programs in the <laughs> Yeah, what's, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, please, come ahead. The liberal democratic, you listen to what other people say. I don't necessarily agree with that. I would like to share his experience. 
for the post that we're going to do. After a lot of festival, I was in Dimumos, on the way home, he, uh, it took him uh, three days. And he prayed uh, to um, overcome this problem uh, with TV. <laughs> when, I, when I arrived, uh, I realized that my uh, flat was, um, uh, somebody was broke in. And so was TV. <laughs> Suresh Jabra Bhu is uh, praising Lord Krishna. Hari! <laughs> he looks at you every day. Krishna conscious, the means of achieving it is to accept everything favorable for advancement and reject everything unfavorable. Yeah, what should we do? That's a, that's an important I didn't come to the point. What should we do? No, no. We don't as a movement we don't have any this much direction. It's just we're just kind of going on and trying. We're a we're a disparate confederation of individuals. A confederation of disparate individuals. Disparate means we are kind of different than individualistic. <laughs> we know, as a movement, we don't seem to have any like very clearly defined goals. Or, I mean, it's kind of vaguely there that we have a sense of Krishna consciousness. But a strategy or any... I don't... Maharaj, you agree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How to, um, well, I wanted to get through to this. I mean, like I said, I don't want to make the whole thing overly negative. I say we will show ourselves we can decide to be strong. But it's also very important to keep good association. Because there is a lot of association within our world. Just like if someone's trying to seriously cross Krishna, they'll call you a fundamentalist or a hardliner. That's one thing. People will call you, you know, give you bad name. Another thing is that uh, people will say, ah, you know, why are you bothering? You'll find out after some. You're just you're just dreaming about being too Krishna, so Krishna. You should just be realistic. After some time, you'll understand that actually, you know, you should just be like me. Or why why practice? You can't you can't actually become Krishna. But they'll talk about this and, and try to in a very pessimistic, negative way that you can't become Krishna. Why are you why are you even bothering? You know, later. Uh, be realistic. Later on in life, you can be more serious. So, so many negative things. And they'll say, I've seen so many people like you. Where are they now? They've all gone away. <laughs> Very pessimistic. Don't keep, we're idealistic. Let's try, for, let's try for the goal of being pure devotees. Let's keep association with those devotees who believe in that goal. If we don't make it, if we didn't lose it, the attempt to become Krishna conscious is all for our gain, but if we don't even try, then we won't do anything. If we think I'll become Krishna conscious late, later, Prabhupada gave that example that uh, a man he used to deliver flowers to the temple every day. That was his job, he was a flower seller. 
So he used to come to live with him every day. And every day he thought, well, maybe I should go inside and get the, have darshan of the deity. And he thought, no, I'm coming every day. I'll go tomorrow. He thought like that every day of his life. He never once went for darshan. And he died and went to hell. So I don't think really propagate that last night, but it's my last night. Anyway. So the thing we can say, you know, I'll do it later. If you think like that, you'll never do it. There's always, there's always a good reason that Maya will present why we should not become Krishna conscious now. For everything that we do that is not Krishna conscious, Maya will give us very many Krishna conscious reasons. <laughs> you should watch TV because by doing so you'll become more broad-minded and you can interact with the Kali society better. And if you watch Discovery Channel and watch how the fish swimming under the water and <laughs> swimming this way and that way, that will make you more knowledgeable and then you can preach better. You can, if you meet any expert on it. What's the word? Fishology? Pissology? <laughs> Pissology, shall I? <laughs> oh, I think it's actually the word. Sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, I so if you meet them, you can say, well, you know, I can talk very long to them, and they'll be impressed, and then, and then, and then what? And then you can still, but you don't know anything about Krishna, so you won't have anything to say. So, but the, Maya will give so many excuses why we should be in Maya and not Krishna conscious. There's so many hands up. Well, I'll take Suresh off because he's late. Because yeah. it's late. I, I just, uh, you, you presented so many cultural challenges both in the world at large and in our own movement. Now uh, we're in danger of, you know, Losing our higher taste, basically. The danger of losing the gift of Shabbat Gateway. Yeah. So yeah maybe, we're actually in very severe danger. So in, for the next class, mm -hmm. could you please meditate on individual and collective solutions? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my... Because it looks pretty bleak, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have faith that you can meditate on that. Mm -hmm. Why is the GBC not taking action to rectify this? Good question. <laughs> well, okay. Should we start there tomorrow? Don't worry about it. That's a good answer. Don't wait for the GBC. That's true. Good question. Coming next. Prabhupada didn't say there are many pseudo devotees in our movement. He said that in the Krishna consciousness movement there are many pseudo devotees. There's some difference now, because exactly what is meant by the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Generally when Prabhupada refers to Krishna Consciousness Movement, he refers to Isko. But uh, for the rest of the purport, I, I, be, I believe he was specifically thinking about one of his godbrothers. Kali Chema. I don't think that's... He says there are many pseudo devotees in the dress of devotees. I believe he was referring particularly to one of his godbrothers. But there's no reason that it can't be within this movement also. What did Prabhupada mean by it? Well, I guess he meant what he said. People who are posing as devotees. But, but the, the particular devotee who I believe Prabhupada was referring to from the context, um, he was actually very envious of Prabhupada, one of Prabhupada's godbrothers. Uh, by his activities, he was, and Prabhupada said several times he's envious. And then he passed away before Prabhupada. And the devotee asked Prabhupada that what happened to him, Prabhupada? Prabhupada said, he went back to Godhead. 
And the devotee was surprised. And, you know, he was so envious of you. And he was, apparently you know, not only Prabhupada said, but all Prabhupada's godbrothers said that he was simply utilizing the assets of the going about institution for his own sense of education. Prabhupada said that, no, uh, he did so much for my Guru Maharaj, and my Guru Maharaj, he sees the good side, and he took him back to God. So it may be that uh, even if you want to say there was someone who, maybe there are pseudo devotees, but Krishna is more clever than that, and he can also use them in his service. Because even if you want to, even if it's accepted that someone may be exploiting the assets of this movement for their own, anyway, that's another, I want to get into all this, it's another big topic. Can you ask a question? I have a question, Maharaj. Yeah. How serious is it if people are showing up, like the Pujari shows up five minutes late to Mongol Arjuna? How serious is it if the Pujari turns up five minutes late? Well, if they turn up five minutes after the starting time, then it's really serious, because they're supposed to wake up the deities half an hour before. <laughs> and then often in the hole, so you know, that means that the whole thing... I see, you know, it sometimes happens, actually, that the jari comes in, and then, you know, the, the waking, and then the, the feeding the bowl, that all goes on in three minutes, and then like that. So it's supposed to happen. Or more serious is when they have uninitiated devotees worshipping the deities. Um, how serious? Well, what do you mean? How serious? What are you going to say? Is what's the what's the measure? What's the scale? Should be changed immediately. Should be yes. Should be done in the case. Who's going to do it? Everything. Everything should be rectified immediately. Just like you, you rascal, putting your hand on your mouth. You should go and wash it. Immediately. I didn't tell you. I failed to tell you. Usually I tell you. Because Prabhupada told you. Immediately. And he put the hand in the mouth. Go and wash it. This, I think it's, it's again, it's, you know, where do we go from here? No, 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 but just a question. Okay. It's a, it, it's just, many times people ask me, I have a small question. And the small question doesn't necessarily have a small answer. <laughs> what is the purpose of life? It's a small question. <laughs> well, I'll deal with it in the next section. The next session. You know, in the, in the, tomorrow or the next one. We have another two days. We can't do everything now. Bhakti Vikaya Swami Ki Jai! Thank you very much.